So what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Once again, you know I appreciate having you here. Now a couple of days ago, the guys down at Doble Motorcycles phoned me up and said, Mr. Fish, well they didn't actually call me Mr. Fish, they called me by my name. And they said, how would you like to come down and uh, do a little video and a little thing on the new Honda Goldwing? And you know me, I'm never going to pass up an opportunity to ride a bike because I love motorcycling. So this basically is my first impression of the new 2018 Honda Goldwing. Now what we're doing today is uh, they wanted to set up a demo route and it's going to take about an hour and a half. I don't know where the route takes me. I'm basically playing the part of a, a purchaser, someone that's going to buy the bike and this is the route it's going to take you on. Now he's told me he's avoiding motorways, which I think he's done personally for me because he knows I hate motorways. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people out there that will do reviews on this telling you how it works at big open roads and those 70 mile an hour long straight roads. This thing's going to be great on that. Well, I have no doubt about that but this one is going to be my first impression of how it handles the roads I like to ride or around the places I like to ride I'm not actually sure of the roads it's going to take me on and at some point I'm going to pull over and uh, give you guys a little look around on the bike I have done a tiny bit of research not a lot so I'm going to have to wing it a little bit I might put some stuff on the screen but the best thing is if you want to know the specification and all those little bits on the bike then go to Honda's website or to Doble Motorcycles website I will put the links in the description below and you you can check out the specifications there and remember that different countries will have different specifications so make sure you check out the one that's relevant to your country now before we get right into this test ride or this review or this first impression uh, what I like to say is I'm not a journalist never have been I'm just a guy that rides motorcycles and I love riding motorcycles about me six foot two 16 stone a little bit wide in the shoulder been riding for about 30 years, currently own Africa Twin and a CB500X. If you want to ask any questions about this or anything to do with a bike, if I can help you out, I will. Leave the comment in the comments section below. Right, so let's get on with it. I will go into this in more depth, but the actual dash, I love the dash. You've got this TFT screen in the middle, which holds your stereo, your sat nav, and all your information for your bike. It's got Apple CarPlay as well, so you can, uh, I don't know why they call it CarPlay, it's a motorcycle. Apple motorcycle play uh, so you can pair up all your stuff here it's Bluetooth it's got a headset Bluetooth pairing so you can listen to the sat nav the GPS but I haven't got that paired up I've got my Cena on me but for some reason that wouldn't pair up it's probably down to my lack of uh, intelligence when it comes to pairing Bluetooth products so far initial impressions considering this weighs a ton and it is very heavy on the move do you know what it's not heavy at all you can feel it's a long wheelbase because it's not super sharp steering but you wouldn't think you're riding a battleship engine is buttery that's the only way i can explain it buttery it is so smooth it's a six cylinder lump and it's a 1.8 this version is the dct i'm not sure if it comes in a manual i wouldn't have bought this in a manual anyway i don't see the point if you're on this sort of bike you might as well get it in a dct mode she handles well for a big lump i'm not sure on the ground clearance so i don't really want to push it and I'm guessing 90% uh, of riders are uh, not going to be taking it down little lanes like this. So thank you Ian at Dobles <laughs> for selecting this route. I don't know what the sounds like on the microphone. I've got the windscreen up at its fullest at the moment and I've got the visor completely open. Usually when I'm recording I have the visor closed but I can't feel any wind in my face. So the screen is operated by this button here and let's see the difference. So that's wind straight into my face, in my eyeballs. And if I put it up, it eliminates it. Still get a little bit just around the top of the crash helmet, but not buffeting. It's a nice smooth air. As I said, I've got the visor open now, and I could ride like this all day long. The route's basically going to take me, so I've been told, via Box Hill up to Newlands Corner and back to Coulston Doble Motorcycles. And seeing as I ride these routes quite a lot anyway, it's a nice day out for me. I'm going to grab a coffee when I get to Newlands Corner and I'll do a walk around there. Initial impressions, bloody good. This is a fantastically smooth bike. The suspension is ironing out any imperfections on the road. This is luxury. This is luxury motorcycling. Now what I've got here is the DCT version. 
What that means is, uh, for you guys that don't know, is it's basically automatic. This one's got seven speeds. It's a seven speed DCT gearbox. It's got different rider modes. It's got Sport, Tour, uh, I don't know what else it's got. Let's try it on here. Right, it's got Sport, it's got Economy, Rain and Tour. Now I've got it in Tour at the moment, which is probably the middle ground. So it's nice and smooth. You can put it in manual mode which you use uh, the downshift here and the upshift is on the other side of the gears there. If you want to know about the DCT gearbox, go on YouTube. I'm sure there will be someone that has made a, a video completely on the DCT gearbox. It's got like a weird telelever kind of front suspension. So when you brake, it doesn't dive at the front. It brakes quite flat like the BMW telelever. I'm sure it's not called that and uh, Honda won't appreciate me comparing it to the BMW, but it's on a par as in it doesn't dive there's no rocking it's completely flat all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get over the brow of this hill i'm going to stick it in sport mode and just give it a little bit let's see what we've got all right we're in sport mode now basically what happens in sport modes is it holds on to the revs longer whereas in the other gear it was in fifth or sixth it's now dropped down to fourth so let's give it some and see how it goes Yeah, this is rapid. This is rapid. It's comfortable rapid though. So you kind of don't get that sense of being so fast, but you just know it is. It's almost like luxury car fast. You know, you put your foot down, it gives that little kick down and then it goes off, but you're in so much comfort. You just sit back, smile, relax and enjoy the speed. It's not like throwing your back where you're holding on for dear life, but yeah. It has a hell of a lot of poke. I read this morning that it's got about 170 newton meters of torque. So, not bad, not bad at all. I have to be honest, when I was first given the keys to this and I looked at it, I was a little bit nervous. This is outside my comfort zone. I don't like huge bikes. I like light, maneuverable bikes. This is not my thing. Having said that, after 10, 15 minutes, I don't know how long I've been on it. I've been on it, uh, yeah, about 15 minutes. It doesn't feel like it's intimidating at all it's not it is really well balanced i can't get over how good this bike is just at normal everyday speeds i mean i knew it was going to be good on the motorway but i'm not taking it on the motorway i'm taking it down roads like this country lane sitting behind lorries doing the everyday riding that i would do and i thought it was going to be well out of its comfort zone it's going to be like top heavy it's going to be ploddy it's going to feel underutilized but it's great it really is good now as i said at the top of the video this is just the first impression this is not a review i don't get paid by honda i don't get paid by doble i don't get paid by anyone but my work i just love riding motorcycles and if i can get this thing around these roads then most people can i do like the fact it's got analog speed and an analog rev counter i miss that on bikes i kind of don't like the digital gauges they're kind of dead they give you no sort of like I don't know, I think it's a nostalgia thing, but I've always preferred analog stuff. This is a really, really bumpy road. And it's ironing out the bumps really nicely. I'm quite impressed. You can still feel them, but it's not trying to throw me over the windscreen. Right, so we're just chilling now, 30 miles an hour, fifth gear, tour mode, one and a half thousand revs. And it's effortless, absolutely effortless. And what this thing also has is hill start and hill control so when you're on a steep incline whether you're facing down or up it will hold the bike until you give it some gas and then it'll go off so you haven't got to worry about it rolling about it's also got stop start it's not on at the moment we've switched that off but to save a little bit of fuel when you come to a rest it will switch itself off and there's another clever little trick it does some kind of magic basically within these paddle shifts and that is you put it into a certain mode I can't remember, he did tell me how to do it, but it's called walk mode. Because it's DCT, you can actually control first gear with the paddle shift just to help you move it around the garage. And also it's got a reverse as well, so you can use this paddle shift here to reverse it back at a slow speed. So you can save your little legs. Right. Now normally, on a bike this size, you'd avoid roads like this. engine sounds lovely i don't know whether you can get exhaust for this i'm not sure how many owners would put aftermarket exhausts on this 
but I think it would sound spectacular with aftermarket exhaust. I mean, it sounds pretty good as it is. What a stunning view, Box Hill. Lovely. Oh, I'm so chilled out. I don't know what I was nervous about with this bike. I really don't know what I was nervous about. I'm nervous about this, to be honest. Can you see that on the sat nav? This is a little bit. Now, this is the biggest bike in Honda's range and it's 30,000 pounds. And I'm coming up to a left-hand bend and I don't really like left-hand bends at the best of times. And it is so sharp and it is gravelly and you've got people coming the other way. So as a, I take it normally wide on anything, but this, I'm gonna to have to go via the trees to go around, so we shall see. I'm so glad it's got a DCT gearbox, so I can control it on the back brake. I will be a f almost swore then. Car coming the other way. No worries. Easy! I mean, the more I get used to this, the more I'm liking it. It's a long beast, don't get me wrong. But it handles. I mean, you're not going to be dragging your knee about. Don't get me wrong. It's not that sort of thing. But it's better than it has any right to be. Brakes are very good. As I said before, because it's got that anti-dive kind of mechanism on the front, it brakes really flat, which is fantastic. It gives you so much confidence. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay attention to this little box up the top here, which is telling me my next turnings, which is there. <laughs> I know I can get through up here, so it's not the end of the world. This is the beauty of having uh, paired up Bluetooth. She would have told me the instructions, or he, I don't know what the voice is, would have told me the instructions long before I got there. One thing I will say is about the indicator button. It's a bit hidden. It's tucked away here, so you kind of struggle to find it. But again, that's because I'm new to the bike. It's not my bike, I'm finding all this new, so I'm sure after a day or two, it'll be all fine. Let's give it a little honk, see what it sounds like. Jeez, oh, that was a bit loud. I wasn't expecting it to be that loud. I mean, if you ever watch any of my reviews or first impressions, you will find that I like most bikes anyway. So it's very rare that I get on a bike and think that's hideous. And when I get to Newlands Corner, I'm actually gonna take the lining out of my jacket. This windshield is doing such a good job and this fairing that I am sweating behind here. It's only 16 degrees today, 16 or 17 degrees. And I'm having a little bit of a sweat on. Then I can put the screen down so I get more air in the face, which I would do normally if I wasn't talking to you guys, but I am. My legs can't feel any wind whatsoever. Nada, nothing. And this seat so far is really comfortable. And I've got long legs. I've got quite long legs. And I was expecting them to hit the ridge here, but they don't. There's plenty of room. So if you've got long legs, you're six foot two, you're gonna fit on this. And if you're small, you're gonna fit on this. There's plenty of room for everyone. One size fits all. Down here, you've got a handbrake. Because it's an automatic, it's got no uh, gear. You can't hold it in gear. You have really got to get into your mind, your mindset that this is a cruiser. This is a chilled out bike. This is not a hooligan machine. It's not designed for that. It will go fast and it'll go very fast for probably long distances with no problem whatsoever. So autobahns, yeah, spot on. Motorways are spot on. But once you get your head around how to ride it, it's just glorious. It really is a glorious bike. And I was expecting to not like this one bit. The previous models, I had no intention of riding. I looked at him in the showrooms and I thought, meh, it's just a bike. Why would someone buy that bike? Why would someone buy something that is bigger than my car? It makes no sense. On two wheels, I like them to be small, compact, great handling. Okay, I've got the Africa Twin, so I can go touring on that and I can do all sorts of things on that. That's quite a big bike as well. But this sort of thing, pure tourer, no, didn't appeal to me whatsoever. If I was in America, Australia, doing long distances, then yeah, I get it. But now I've ridden this, I must admit, when I saw this at the motorcycle show, I did quite like it, because it's a, a little bit more compact, it's more modern. It looks up to date. It looks like a proper motorcycle, not a massive beast with just two wheels attached. It actually has some styling, it looks quite good. And I was skeptical on the routes uh, around here that I was gonna take, I thought it's gonna be too big, it's gonna be so slow handling. And it is slow handling, it's a long wheelbase. It's not razor sharp, but 
it's, it's astonishing that this bike does this. It has no right to. This is a big tourer. It is really, really relaxing. It really is comfortable. This seat is sublime, absolutely sublime. One of the nicest I've sat on. The backrest is in just the right position for me. I don't know if it's adjustable. I don't know what the options are for seats, but as it comes out the box in this standard form here, it suits me. Right, let's put it in sport mode. This engine is addictive. The braking on it is lovely because it brakes so flat coming into the bends. There's no dive. It's great. It really is good. And it's just little bits of touch of the throttle. It's not all this. It's just subtleties. You can be really subtle with the throttle. It's fantastic. All right, let's uh, chuck it into economy mode now. Econ mode which is the weakest of the lot, I would say. What the modes do, they not only adjust the engine mapping, they adjust the suspension as well. So if you're in rain, it would be the softest suspension uh, with power delivery that's a little bit weaker. Sport is obviously the most power, the highest rev in, it'll change down quicker, and the stiffest suspension. Tour is kind of in between everything. Econ's basically a little bit gutless. So I keep it in tour for the villages, and then when I get out to the open sections, I'll stick it back in sport and have a little bit of a play again. It does help that it's a beautifully sunny day. It really does help. If it was pissing down with rain now, I might feel a little bit different, but I would probably be quite dry because this fairing is really, really effective. I would say the only negative because of such a long wheelbase and a big bike is you lack the front end feel. You can feel when it's a little bit twitchy, which is not often, but are you really going to be pushing the front end of this bike? Are you going to be diving into bends as fast as you can, last minute braking? Probably not. I doubt that very much. What you're going to be doing is this, cruising around, enjoying yourself, going to see the sights, going out touring, go and see the world. Get on one of these bikes and just get out there and go and see stuff. This is a glorious way to see the country. I'm really getting nervous about myself. I really like this bike. I'd say that on most bikes I get on because I have no preconception, no preconceived idea of what I'm going to do. Apart from on this, my preconceived idea it was basically, I'm not going to like it. It's going to be big, heavy, cumbersome. And now I'm on it, it's blown that theory completely out of the water. I love this bike. I'm not saying I'd buy one because you'd have to ride places like this. I don't know if I could commute on it every day. If you've got a great big commute, a long one, then yeah, you could do it. But I would stick to my little bikes for around London. If I had money to burn and I could afford one to put in the garage, I'd seriously think about this as a tourer. I am so comfortable. And it's one of those bikes you don't get frustrated behind traffic because you just whack it back into tour mode and you enjoy the scenery. We're coming into Newlands Corner now, which is put as a waypoint. I think that's the turnaround point, and then it heads back to the shop. So what I'm going to do is pull in there. I'm going to grab myself a cup of coffee and uh, change the battery on the GoPro and give you guys a little bit of a walk round of this bike. So I shall see you when I finish my coffee, and we'll have a little look round. All right, so I made it to Newlands Corner. Just had my coffee, and here it is, the Honda Goldwing 1800cc, six-cylinder, Mahusiv Battleship Beast. And it's a good bike. It really is a good bike. I mean, look at the size of it. It has no right to go around the corners like it does. But what I'm gonna do is take you through some of the stuff on it. We go front to rear. As I said, I didn't do my research on it before I came out. Had a little glance on the internet. And uh, I'll just point out some things, some things I like, whatever I know, I'll try and point it out. We're gonna go through the dash, the buttons on the handlebars and all the little bits, the luggage. And we're basically gonna play it by ear as we go along and see what we can find out. Right, front, I do know that's a 130 70, 18. I'm not sure of the back because everything's in the way. I can't actually read it, but it looks like a 200 rear section, so it's pretty big. 
LED lights front and rear. Brakes are ABS front and rear with dual combined braking, which is uh, pretty good. And it's got this almost telelever front suspension. I don't know if you can see that, but what it does, it doesn't dive. It really brakes flat, a bit like the BMW system. I've just noticed the radiators are in the side here. Not really interesting, but I thought I'd tell you that anyway. Right, so on the bike itself, you've got a center console here, which is operating the computer system here. It's also here as well. Mirrors, uh, I can't find a switch for the mirror, so I'm assuming they're just manual, which is a little bit of an oversight. If there is a switch on here to fold the mirrors in, it would be nice, but I haven't seen one, so I don't know. So let's go through uh, the luggage. Our foot pegs are nice and comfortable really big and squidgy and the rear ones if you've got a rear passenger they got a board and these i suppose these are sort of like hero blobs for the back i wouldn't want to touch them down now because they'd lift the bike up in the air you've got them here as well maybe they're expecting this bike to <laughs> kind of topple over at some point who knows side box i've got my jacket in there at the moment so you've got that side luggage there side opening never a fan of side opening stuff Although that one's not too bad because it's got quite a lip here so your stuff falls into there rather than on the floor like it does on my Africa Twin. Rear box, they say you can get two crash helmets in there. I doubt that very much. One definitely because I've had this one in there. You've also got USB port in there and you can put your iPod or whatever in there and have all your music there which is set up to the screen up the front. Also in this box it's got a little switch where this comes out because a lot of people have been asking about this. And this comes out, you put your D-ring in there, put it back in, and that's a helmet lock. So let's have a little look at the dash. It's keyless ignition. I'm going to sit on it for this one. And you keep that on your person, obviously. And then it's got electronic steering lock. So it works like a key, basically. That is locked. So do it once, and that should turn on. There we go. It's turning on, and the screen should light up. Oh, it's all fancy stuff, you see. It's got a radio, which I'm not going to listen to because of uh, copyright problems. So I press a home button here. You've got audio source, navigation, phone, vehicle setting, and audio setting. Right, so let's go audio source. Let's start with number one. And that is radio. So you can have uh, radio or Bluetooth, I believe is Apple CarPlay. Or you can just plug your iPod into the USB support at the back there. You can have that. Navigation is obviously a GPS system, which we're using today. Phone, pair it with your phone, uh, and you can use, obviously, Bluetooth headset if you want, but then you can pair your phone to your headset anyway. But I think if you pair it to the bike, it will all come up on the screen, who's calling you, all that sort of stuff. Uh, vehicle settings, that's probably more interesting. So you've got auto turn signals, a bit like the Harley Davidson, where after a while they will self-cancel. You've got idling stop as well, so when you come to a standstill, the engine will switch off to save a bit of fuel. Suspension is electric, so you can choose between one person, one person luggage, two people, two people and luggage. Under that you've got units, so you've got fuel consumption, which is in miles per gallon, distance, which is in miles, temperature is in centigrade, air pressure. Oh, it's got an air pressure gauge, which is uh, shown here, so your tyre pressures are monitored as well. Right, the HSTC is your traction control system. That's obviously on at the moment, because you don't really need to turn it off on a bike like this. Why would you? You're not going to go out racing. Right, you've got auto dimmer meter illumination. And I've got this set on auto, or they've got it set on auto, so I will assume that when it becomes uh, night time, it will dim down. You all right, fella? Yeah, <laughs> Sorry? 18. Two hours later. I right, just got chatting to some real nice guys. Uh, it's that sort of bike that people just want to come up and talk to you. Right, back to where we were. We've got auto dimmer here. When it becomes nighttime, it will change the illumination of the dash. You've got different settings uh, for day and night, external temperature. All right, so I don't know where that comes up, but I've just turned it on. EQ1, have no idea what that means. Headlight opening, again. I have no idea what that means. You've got audio settings, which is going to be your sound, your Bluetooth, your phone, your Apple AirPlay, that sort of thing. So that's basically what this does. You've got heated grips on here. I hope I haven't turned them on. Info button just brings up a little line at the bottom, tells you everything you've got in there. That's the radio system in stereo. 
on the right here you've got all the information for the bike you've got the luggage you've got a little picture of the bike in it tell you if your side boxes are open your boots open tell you if your stands down tells you your suspension setting oh i've got the heater grips on because it comes up here there we go turn them off so and there you go i don't know if you can actually see that with a gopro let me get in there that's the heated seat so that's the front one and the rear one is controlled by this little gubbin down there you can also control the dashboard using this here which is controlling all of this up here you've got your telephone hands free there you've got your hooter i won't do it now because it'll scare a few people and you've also got this walk mode here so because the bike's heavy you can engage this uh, he did show me how to do it but I can't remember now so I'm not going to muck around with it. Again, go on YouTube, I'm sure someone's done it. So you press that button when the engine's running and you can control the bike using the up and down shifters here. So the front one will allow the engine to pull you slightly forward and this one allow you to walk it backwards basically. It gives you just a little bit of revs and assist you with moving the bike. It's pretty good like that. Right, on this side you've got hazard lights, you've got your kill switch, you've got your mode up here which changes here if you can see that. That's your modes for your riding modes. So you've got tour, sport, economy, and rain. This is your DCT control, neutral, drive, automatic, manual. So you can have it fully automatic or you put it in manual using these shifters here. Cruise control works as a normal cruise control. No clutch and uh, front brake, rear brake. So I think that just about covers the dashboard. Not as clear as probably some other YouTube videos out there, but it's the best you're going to get because I didn't do my research on the bike. Anyway, let's get back to riding this thing. Right, so keys in the pocket. Let's turn it on, give it one twist, and it turns your ignition on. It's also got an airbag. Hopefully we won't use that today. And to get to the fuel, you've got to open the box on the other side, which is... Let me just walk around. This one here, and you've got a little petrol flap there, just there. Stereo wise, you've got two speakers up front and two speakers at the back. But I'm not going to put the stereo on simply because copyright. Right, so to put it in gear, just press drive. We're in gear, ready to go. And remember to take the handbrake off, otherwise, you lock the back wheel up. <laughs> I thought I had a puncher, but it's not, it's just me being dumb. Oh, she does pick up sweetly. I uh, met up with some nice guys there. Some subscribers, which was cool. Uh, I didn't catch your name or I can't remember your name. So whoever you are, leave your comment in the section below. And I will say hello via the power of YouTube. Thank you very much for coming over and shaking hands. Good chat. I always like talking to people. It is good fun talking to bikers. Uh, we're a quirky bunch. <laughs> I'm not saying that you're quirky or mad or anything like that, but it was good fun. Nice chatting to you. And what was good to know about that is the guy is thinking of buying the NC750 DCT version based on my review. So that's always cool to know. And Honda, if you're listening, uh, a little bit of commission my way wouldn't go amiss. Anyway, back to this ride. Right, so gripes about the bike, things I don't like. Uh, a bit cluttered on the switch gear, especially this side. Uh, I don't know why you've kind of got this jog wheel and this, they're both the same thing. You can kind of eliminate that or that, but I actually prefer using this to that. That's a little bit fiddly. I said before the indicators, they're a bit tucked away, so they're a little bit annoying. But apart from that, I suppose you get used to stuff. It's like any bike, it takes time. Mirrors is a little bit of a gripe, only because I don't think they're electric. I can't find a button to bring them in or to adjust them, so they're manual, which I don't get on a bike with all this technology. There we go, quicker than an Aston Martin. But the Aston Martin does sound a lot better. Right, now let's get to the sticking point. And the sticking point of this bike is uh, £30,000. This bike costs £30,000. So at the end of the day, would you buy this over two other bikes? Because you could get two £15,000 bikes for this. 
and you could buy I mean this is biased and remember these opinions are just my opinions they're not the opinions of anyone else they're not Honda's opinions they're not Doble Motorcycles opinions these are my opinions so you might agree with them you might disagree with them whatever your comments are whatever your opinions please drop them in the comments section below I'd love to hear from you even if they're quite negative or they're contradicting what I say if you've got more information on this bike than I have then drop it down below I'm sure the subscribers would like to hear it but I think the problem is is because I'm a Londoner and when you're a Londoner or anyone that lives in a city especially a highly populated city big bikes don't really make a whole lot of sense having said that this thing at walking pace at four or five miles an hour is so balanced it's absurd it shouldn't be that balanced I mean comparing this to the last big bike I rode of this sort of that size which was the Harley I did a video on where I got so much hate from Harley owners it's unreal because the bike was so poor it was unreal this is in the same category and this is chalk and cheese and the big Harleys are 25 grand 30 grand with all the bits on which is in this ballpark and I'd have this every day of the week over one of those big Harleys this is a bike this is a big touring bike you can actually ride this bike has no right to give me this amount of fun no right whatsoever and let me just emphasize when I do say fun I don't mean like when I'm on my other bikes going down the country lanes and sliding around and doing all sorts of silliness I actually mean ease of ride now if I was to think what sort of roads I would be using a Honda Goldwing on, I wouldn't have put country roads on the list. I would have just headed for the big A roads, dual carriageways and motorways in my mind. Now I've ridden it on these roads, do you know what? It can do anything. I wouldn't take it off-roading, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't do that. But on tight, twisty roads, if you've got a little bit of confidence, it's so well balanced that it's easy to ride anywhere. What's weird, I don't know if it's because as you get older you appreciate the finer things in life. You're not going hell for leather. You don't have to prove yourself. You're not going crazy everywhere you go but I'm starting to like these bigger chilled out relaxing bikes I mean people will say it's like riding a magic carpet but I don't know how they get that analogy because I don't know anyone or have met anyone that's actually ridden a magic carpet so if you have ridden a magic carpet uh, leave the details below I want to know what it felt like does it feel like a gold wing do people on magic carpet say wow this is like riding a gold wing Steering wise it does take a little bit of input from the rider you've got to counter steer it a bit to make it steer quite quickly uh, well I use that term very loosely it's not a quick steering bike but what I mean is it won't go from side to side without a little bit of input unless you're cruising chilling and taking it easy if you're taking wide sweeping maneuvers then it's fine if you want to hustle it a little bit you've got to kind of push the bars you've got to counter steer it in there to flip it over quicker than it would naturally do because it wants to run wide because of the long wheelbase uh, but I keep saying this you know what you're getting with this you're not getting a sports bike you can't expect to take this round a go-kart track in it to be as good as a supermoto what this bike makes me want to do is buy a DCT gearbox <laughs> it really does every time I get on the DCT bikes I love them and I've ridden the first generation, the second generation, and this is, I don't know whether this is a third generation or specially done for this bike, but this version or whatever it is in this bike suits it down to the ground. If you crave a manual of this, then you're mad. You're absolutely insane. I don't even know if they do a manual, but if they do, it's a waste of money. Don't get a manual version. It's pointless. In conclusion, uh, hanging around a, Newlands Corner there sounds wrong doesn't it I wasn't dogging I was just uh, that's where I did the uh, walk around of the bike the amount of people that came out and spoke to me unreal this bike does generate a lot of attention it's one of those bikes that people just want to know about and once you start telling them about the electronics and everything on it people are amazed granted you then tell them the price and they nearly fall over but it is uh, a talking point this bike is definitely a talking point Right, so I'm going to end the video here. We're nearly back at the shop. It's been a great ride. I've really enjoyed it. This has blown out of the water all my preconceptions of gold wings. I thought this thing was going to be horrible, but it's changed my mind. This thing is glorious. This is really, really good.
it has no right to be this good so anyway on that note i'm going to bid you farewell you know i love you all stay safe fish out get all your bags get out my house i don't want your stuff around i never did you wrong but you did me wrong so go ahead get go, going get Get all your bags, get out my house I don't want your stuff around I never did you wrong But you did me wrong So go ahead and get going